In the previous lecture, we were able to show the electric potential, the voltage, as a result of a ring of charge. Now we're going to use that result to calculate the voltage as a result of a disk of charge. So let's begin. Suppose we have a thin flat disk of radius R0 that contains a charge Q distributed uniformly throughout the disk. We want to calculate the electric potential, the voltage, as a result of this disk of charge at point A. So let's begin by looking at the following diagram. So we have our disk of charge that has a radius given by R0. Now our point A lies on the x-axis and is found a horizontal distance x away from the center of our disk of charge. So how exactly are we going to go about calculating the voltage at point A as a result of our flat thin disk of charge? So we essentially want to recall the equation that we were able to show in the previous lecture. Previously we said the voltage as a result of a ring of charge is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by the square root of x squared plus r squared where r is the radius of that particular ring and x is the distance from the point A to the center of that ring. So, we essentially are going to follow the following method in solving our problem. We divide the thin disk into infinitely many thin rings in which each ring contains the same exact quantity of charge given by an infinitely small charge dq. So the ex one example of such ring is shown by the following outline. So if we take this and we place it flat on the whiteboard, we get the following picture. So this is our disk and this is one particular example of one such ring in which we're dividing our disk into. So the thickness of this ring is given by an infinitely small thickness dr. And the radius of this ring is given by r. So because the quantity of charge on this ring is given by dq, we have to replace the q with dq and that means our voltage at point A as a result of this ring of charge becomes infinitely small and it's given by dv. So, once again, we divide the thin disk into infinitely many thin rings which each contain infinitely small charge, dq. We then calculate the voltage at point A as a result of this single ring of charge, dq, as shown in the following equation. So, this is our voltage at point A as a result of one such ring of charge that has a charge, dq. Finally, since voltage is a scalar, to find the total voltage, we simply take the sum over all of these rings. So we take the integral, as we'll see in just a moment. So, the total voltage is equal to the sum of all these infinitely small voltages, dv, as a result of all these rings. And this is equal to taking the integral of dv. Now dv is equal to this entire ratio, so we replace dv with this equation as shown in the following uh, step. Now, now we want to replace dq with dr, where dr is the thickness of one particular ring. So, since charge is uniformly distributed throughout the disk, that means each ring contains a quantity of charge proportional to its area. So we essentially set up the following proportion. The quantity of charge on one ring, dq, divided by the quantity of charge on the entire disk, q, is equal to the area of our ring 2 pi r multiplied by dr, where r is the radius and dr is our thickness, divided by the total area of our disk given by 2 pi r naught squared. So, 
we essentially want to represent DQ in terms of DR. So we bring the Q over to this side and we get DQ is equal to the following ratio. Notice the pi's will cancel out and DQ is equal to 2 multiplied by Q multiplied by R multiplied by DR divided by R naught squared. So we take this DQ and replace it with the following ratio and we see that the V total is equal to the integral of 2QR dr divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r naught squared multiplied by the square root of x squared plus r squared. So let's take out our constants. So Q is a constant, pi is a constant, epsilon naught is a constant, and r naught is also a constant. That's the radius of our disk, which is a fixed quantity. So now we want to integrate from zero, from a radius of zero, in which our ring has a radius of zero, to a ring that has a radius equal to the radius of the entire disk. So from zero to R naught. So we actually integrate and we get the following quantity. We evaluate our integral and we get this result. So we were able to show that the total voltage at point A as a result of a disk of uniform charge is equal to Q divided by 2 pi epsilon naught multiplied by R naught squared multiplied by the square root of X squared plus R naught squared minus X. Notice this R became an R naught because that's what we're evaluating from zero to R naught. 